Welcome to American Medicine Today. I'm Ethan Euchre. I'm Kimberly Bramill, and we're here at Orlando Health in Central Florida with Dr. Arnold Einhorn, cardiologist and co-medical director at the Orlando Health Heart Institute and one of the developers of HeartBuds. It's a new electronic stethoscope which can be plugged into a smartphone, allowing physicians to transmit data all around the world. The stethoscope dates back 200 years to a French physician who found that simply placing a hollow tube on someone's chest would amplify the internal acoustics of the organs, including the heart and lungs. This was far superior to the original method of placing an ear directly on the patient's chest and also would avoid the embarrassment a male doctor might experience when the patient was female. Stethoscope designs have changed over the years and have already gone digital. However, two Florida doctors have discovered the next step in stethoscope evolution. What made you uh, decide that it needed improvement? Well, it actually arose from myself and my partner, Dr. Bello, who thought there might be a way to access people's heart rhythms um, when they're at home, if they're feeling palpitations. We thought if the smartphone would be an easy way to gather that information and send it to us, but we needed something, the go-between to put on the chest to send to the phone that then sends to it. So this is the, the advent of telemedicine and all these different technologies that will be able to remotely take, uh, evaluate patients anywhere in the world. Dr. Einhorn believes that telemedicine is the wave of the future. I think a large degree of it. It's already been for quite a while in certain parts of the country and all over the country where telemedicine has been used in, for stroke patients and neurosurgical patients where you come in with a, a bleed in the brain and the, they'll do a CT and they'll remotely send it to a neurologist or a neurosurgeon and they'll make the diagnosis. They won't be at home or they'll be in, I don't know, Hawaii and they can make the call. Even patients with diabetes can wirelessly transmit data from their PACs to their physicians. HeartBuds is another step in the evolution of telemedicine as more and more medical specialties are added. This stuff has been in the works for a long time. There's just expanding it to all the different realms and putting the different disciplines in it, be it cardi cardiology or, or internal medicine. So, I mean, you should be able to do all the vitals remotely. You should be able to listen to the heart and lungs remotely. You'll be able to look in the throat remotely. You'll be able to look in the eyes remotely uh, and the ears remotely. So you, all this stuff is doable for physical. It seems very basic because stethoscopes are everywhere. I mean, they're ubiquitous with, with medicine, but some people probably don't even understand what they do. So what can heart buds mimic that a stethoscope does? It's not just the heart, though, like respiration. Listen to the lungs and the heart. Will it take the place of the stethoscope? Uh, not, not, not real soon, no. I think yeah. you'll have stethoscopes around doctors' necks for a long time to come still. But as, a, as an adjunct to decreasing infections or an adjunct mm -hmm. to uh, you know, remote monitoring, this is perfect. How sensitive is the heart bud? Is it, it just as good as a regular stethoscope? Oh yeah, we've or? done studies to show that it's as good as a, as a regular stethoscope. The heart bud and its corresponding smartphone apps not only monitor, but also record data, allowing doctors to visually see the rhythms of the heart. So what other uses do you have for the heart bud? There's the evaluation of patients remotely. Then there's also the concept of people that are in the hospital bed that have infections okay. that are spread, particularly C. diff and also, you know, MRSA. Right. And so they're, they're both pretty problematic in a hospital, and a lot of that is because the, the stethoscopes that are used on people spread the disease. Germs often travel around and live on a traditional stethoscope and can be transferred from patient to patient. This makes heart buds far more hygienic since they allow for evaluation of patients remotely. If there's disease or something on the chest, that's contaminated, it goes up and ends up into the earbuds. Bad Ooh. place to be. Yeah. So those earbuds then transmit it when you go to the next room to someone else. Mm. So yeah. with this, we would put these heart buds in each room and that wouldn't st move to any other room. You'd just stay in there and we would electronically send the signal to a nursing station or something that can evaluate the patient, h l lungs and heart. And I know one of the, there seems to be sort of a divided camp, at least among the doctors we've spoken with about telemedicine mm -hmm. where some say you know it's very convenient uh, it can be done anywhere but then there's been other doctors that say well it takes away the interaction between the interaction the patient. between patient and physician absolutely that's probably there's some truth to that but in the remote areas where you don't have access to physicians this will be uh, you know something that can be useful I know as as a patient it would be great to not have to go sit in a waiting room to yes. not you know to just and get sick from their patients that right to be around that. the other sick people mm -hmm. you know it'd be great to just sit in my easy chair and you know let stay you listen sick to my alone. heart and stay <laughs> sick alone don't we all just want to stay <laughs> sick alone <laughs>
we've mm -hmm. covered uh, on American Medicine Today about the whole FDA approval process and how it can drag on for yes. years and from, from just drugs that are trying to be approved to, uh, to instrumentation and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, how have you found the FDA approval process to be? It's uh, somewhat arduous, but I think there's a reason for it. They want to make sure that you do it, you know, uh, judiciously and make sure you're not putting anything out there that potentially could harm or give false information. Are there ever times that you think somebody shouldn't use this type of module? I mean, on the new version, probably not. Okay. But we're not there yet. Got it. Where are you along this process? Do you know when it might become available? We're going along. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. It's a work in progress. Yes, exactly yeah. right. And so this version 2.0, um, anything you can tell us about that, or is it top secret? Well, it's going to. Well, it's not top secret, but we're going to have other bells and whistles with it to make it much more um, facetably easier to use, and maybe other technologies associated with it to send it places. Right now, we need it connected to the phone. Maybe in the future, we won't. Basic prototypes are currently available online. However, a newer model is being retooled with further innovations. As with anything, we have the initial go around with it, and now we're developing a, a second, like a, a second phase of the of the instrument, mm -hmm. making it a little bit more, a, a little better to hear, and you know, listening to in a better way. When you talk about being available, is it something where you're hoping that patients themselves can buy those parts and, and take them on trips so they yes. have access to it all the time or only being used in hospitals? Uh, of that too. I think it's okay. very good to someone should be able to buy this and then hook up to a system and be able to remotely send if there's a problem or they're worried about a problem in the future to have this around like, a, like your toothbrush and whatnot, have it in your thing, say, listen, I'm not feeling well. Right. I, I can send it to my doctor. And I heard also that you're going to be able to use it for new mothers to hear the heartbeat of yeah. their infant. Yeah, in you, utero. Can, you can listen to the heartbeat mm -hmm. uh, of a baby. But again, we're trying to put it in another level. And it, initially it was a good first start, but we're, 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 we're retooling it. Dr. David Bellow is the Department Chief of Cardiology and co-developer of HeartBuds. So Dr. Einhorn said that you're the true brains behind the HeartBuds, which you already look like you're going to disagree with that part. <laughs> Tell us about that partnership and how it sort of evolved. Well, it's, it's a team idea. And uh, Arnie and I uh, has been for a while thinking about different mechanisms to enhance mm -hmm. our patient experience and enhance our ability to provide a better you know, connection with our patients. He and Dr. Einhorn saw the smartphone as a useful medical device since nearly everyone already carries one. It can do so many things, you know, from being able to do your email, your faxes, your pictures, your camera, you name it. And there's just an app for everything. It's an app for everything. Is exactly right. right. Mm -hmm. The way we saw it was is probably the most impressive medical device tool mm -hmm. because it allows to do many of the things in information technology that we are, are doing today on a daily basis. So what if you were capable of adding an app, software, mm -hmm. or an accessory, your hardware, to that very medical device, the iPhone, right. and utilize it to connect to our patients? The Orlando Health Physicians were the first to patent the external monitoring device for a smartphone, which really changes care for both physicians and their patients in the process of trying to expedite a diagnosis. We were the first to patent the idea, submit the idea, and the U.S. Patent Office recognized as a utility patent our ownership of that idea and that final product. And that is a process that took years of review and comparison, and they didn't find anybody else before. So we were granted a very important patent to cover the intellectual property behind this process. The FDA approval process is oftentimes limiting to medical development, but Dr. Bello didn't let that stop him. This device alone has taken over three years from concept to fruition. It can be a nightmare, and, and we have, you know, back a year ago, to tell you a little bit about the history, the FDA essentially said devices like this, it could be a class one device and would no longer require to go through an extensive process of uh, an onerous process to, as mm -hmm. well to be approved by the FDA. Uh, when the final rules were released in December, they included this type of devices as a class two device. Okay. Every class two device requires extensive documentation, mm -hmm. which we have now provided to the FDA and that we're in that process to get approval for 510K approval to be able to use it as a medical device. Kimberly, we're gonna go ahead and check your heart right now. You have to attach the accessory, which is a heart buds, and go to the record button. Okay. We're gonna take a deep breath for a second, just to practice, out, and hold it. Very nice. Or then just share it to her physician, 
email it or listen to it. Telemedicine is certainly a new frontier in healthcare, and the brilliant minds at Orlando Health are helping pave the way to the future. Thank you very much for sharing your technology with us, Dr. Bello. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you so much, Kimberly. <laughs> Make sure you stay tuned, because coming up after the break, you'll hear our Back to Life segment.